let's talk about the prep for this piece. There are several steps and I'm going to demonstrate them all here. Uh, one of the first things you're going to do is to decoupage some tissue paper onto the main uh, board. And the original piece was done with this uh, red tiny dot um, tissue paper. But unfortunately, they discontinued it, so I can't get any more of it. So I am going to prep um, a piece with this plaid, which will be a little bit trickier because I'll try to get it on there straight. But we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'm, I'll do a surface with the um, dots and I'll do a surface with the plaid. So you can see how they both turn out. So the first thing you need to do is you need to uh, just kind of tear your tissue paper to a size that will fit plus a little extra on the side. And then we're just going to crumple that tissue up very tightly in a wad. We want wrinkles. We want this surface to have texture and the tissue paper is going to do that for us. So there, we've got some nice strong wrinkles in this. And then you just take it out and flatten it out a little bit. But don't try to flatten out all of those wrinkles. This is what gives this piece some interest in the background, among other things. And then you want to get out your decoupage. I use DecoArt decoupage medium in the mat. The gloss gets a little too, too slick and you can't put your pattern on. And uh, so I tend to stick with the medium and I use it a lot. So that's why I have mine in this little stainless steel uh, jar. And that way it gives me easy access, nice big wide open. Uh, mouth. So I'm going to work in sections just so that my decoupage doesn't dry. Now this is tissue paper. You don't need a whole lot of decoupage on there to make this stick. All right. And you can try to line up the edges but you don't really have to because we'll just come around and sand it off. So Wrinkles are good, so don't try to rub too many of them out. All right, one section down. And if you decoupage it into those little grooves, that's fine. We'll take care of that later. All right. Section two down is almost down. Three. I might be able to do section three and four all at once. Let's see. I'm going to give it a shot. All right. Let's get that down. And just flatten it with your hand. If you have, you can't really run a uh, credit card or anything over it. I didn't even try to keep that straight. Looks like it did okay. What was I thinking? If you run a credit card over it, it's going to rip the tissue. So just use your hand. And adhere that to your piece. All right, so first part done. Okay, so while we let the tissue dry, um, I want to go ahead and get these letters and stars based in, and I just kind of taped them down on my uh, work surface here, my towel. And I'm going to use a cosmetic wedge sponge to just um, quickly pounce that color on there, and it's probably going to take a couple coats. So warm white for the lettering. And then it's going to be golden straw 
for the um, stars. So I'm just going to take a scissors and snip off the, the part that has the paint on it and uh, pick up some golden straw on this sponge and pounce some color on my stars. Just easier than trying to do it with a paintbrush. Um, it's a little tedious when you try to paint these things. Okay, so I'm going to snip off again and go back and give my letters another coat of warm white. So just a couple of coats should do it and then you can set those aside to dry. Perfect. And I'll snip again so I can use this guy quite a bit. And I'll give my stars another coat. Okay, we're going to set these aside to dry and then we'll go back to our main piece. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to remove that excess tissue from the edges of our piece. And I just like to do that with an emery board and it gives me a nice clean edge. Easy edge removal. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is going to be kind of weird for you, um, but it works. You want to get a, a cloth. It doesn't have to be clean, really. And just get it wet, not real wet. And we are going to rub off some of this tissue paper and um, mainly in these areas where the grooves are. And you can also do it a little bit around the edge. So my cloth is wet. It's not soaking wet. It's just slightly wet. Or wet enough to wash your face with. How's that? And I'm just going to come along into these grooves. And I'm just going to rub, start rubbing gently, and then you can, when you figure out what pressure you need, you can rub a little harder. And that means some of the tissue paper that's on the actual um, sections might come off. But that's okay, that's, that's a look we're going for. So just go down each of those grooves with this slightly wet, or rag and remove some of this tissue paper and it's going to be like I said here I got down to bare wood but that's all right that's what I want I like to play and experiment with backgrounds and so I don't know this sounded like a good idea so I tried it and don't panic if you rub holes like in this area because that's going to be covered up uh, by the vase of flowers. Okay, so I did that. I think I want a little more to rub just a little off the side edges a little bit. Okay. I think that's going to do it for me. So now we need to let this dry again and then we'll start base painting. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to do is turn my piece the right way. Um, I'm going to paint this first rectangle with Royal Navy. And now I'm going to go ahead and tape off because um, I want to kind of keep these as open as I can. 
Um, but if you do tape yours off, I would suggest that you kind of unstick your tape a little bit by putting it on your uh, towel or your pants leg. And so I'm going to tape off that first stripe. And I'm going to paint that with Royal Navy. It's kind of a pretty color. And I wanted to use a different blue than Deep Midnight Blue. This one seemed to work really well. So this you do want to um, fill it in, you know, so that all that you see is um, the wrinkles that are left behind. So just, um, I think you could get by with one coat. There's a lot of stuff that goes on top of it. So don't water down your paint because if you do, then you'll start lifting the tissue. All right, almost done. Makes it so much easier with the tape on because you don't have to try to avoid or meet that edge. All right. Now let's see how well I did. Oops, I'm going to pull some of my tissue off. So pull off towards the blue part and you stand a better chance of not ripping tissue off. Okay. Then you want to put your pattern on for your stripes. And I'm going to take those off too, but I want my blue to dry first. All right, so I taped off for my country red stripes. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to stay out of those little um, grooves. So if you do, it's okay. If you don't, that's okay too. But the stripes are going to get painted with country red. And just one coat, don't add water to your brush. One coat will do. And since this is pretty straight up, just base painting, I'll most likely fast forward while I do this. So there were a couple of spots where the tape pulled up the tissue on the blue so I just took my finger and rubbed a little Royal Navy on there and once the country red starts drying you'll see little nooks and crannies that didn't get paint in them and if you want you can rub some or paint some um, country red back in there. So we're going to set this aside to dry and we will work on our vase next. The next thing we want to tackle is the vase and the flower area. So I taped off the top edge of the vase, even though a little bit of the straight line goes into the flower, it's okay, it'll be fine. And um, the vase itself is based with winter blue. This is one coat. We have a lot of stuff that goes on top of it. And then the flower area is based with um, burnt umber. And that does not have to be opaque either because it's just kind of to fill in those negative spaces that we have. So once you get that painted, then you want to dry it, give it a light sand, and then you're going to go ahead and put the pattern on for the um, flowers and the leaves. And the round, rounder ones are going to be our sunflowers and the oval ones are going to be the daisies. I forgot to put a little oval in here so I know where the center is. Okay, and then you also want to go back to your um, main board and 
just put on some random pattern for the um, vines that we're going to do there. The ones that are on the pattern are just drawn on there. Uh, when you go ahead and line them on, you can add more, you can add less. And uh, so just the vines, you don't have to put on the pattern for the leaves or anything. So again, I want to remind you that you need to have a really good filbert brush. Um, clean it out if it's been used a lot. Clean it out with some waterless hand sanitizer and, um, and then some mild soap. And then you also want to make sure you have a number four round for the daisies. So the next step we'll be tackling is actually painting this design. We're going to start the process working on this, uh, the main board, and we're going to start on the blue part. So that's painted in Royal Navy. You want to get out um, a little bit of Royal Navy, some winter blue, and some warm white. And then you also want a fairly large brush. This one, I don't even know what size it is. Oh, there we go. Does it three quarter inch? Half inch will do, whatever. What we're going to do is we are going to kind of use our flat brush and dry brush um, some highlighting through the center of this behind where the vines are going to go. We're going to do that first with Royal Navy plus Winter Blue. So Royal Navy, load your brush, and then just pick up a little Winter Blue to make a little bit lighter value of Royal Navy but still keeping it really blue. And so I'm just going to kind of go across here like this. And look how that makes those wrinkles. It's fabulous. Fabulous isn't one of my keywords, so you should feel very special. I used fabulous. And I'm gonna come back and scrub it the other way too. Okay, so I've got a nice base there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up more winter blue. No Royal Navy this time. Just straight winter blue. Get it nice and dry on your brush. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to cover a smaller area because I'm going a little lighter. So I'm not going to go quite as wide. just to lighten that up a little bit more. And now our lightest um, color is gonna be basically right down the center. And I'm just gonna go in and pick up some warm white on that dirty brush. I'm going to get a really light uh, color there and I'm going to keep that mainly in the middle. Just nice soft cross hatch. I hope um, you're loving the wrinkles because I am. We're going to float a little shading around all four edges of this blue rectangle and we're going to do that with Prussian blue. Prussian blue is a very pretty color. It's nice and uh, transparent, but it has enough pigment in it to show up really nice on this Royal Navy. So just a nice side load float of Prussian blue. We're going to go around all four sides. And of course, when you get to a corner, you want to kind of turn the corner and walk that color out to kind of round it a little bit. It really goes well with that um, dry brushed highlight that we have on there. Makes it look a little richer. OK, 
okay. Down the last stretch. So what you want to do now is you want to get out a little burnt umber and a liner brush or a small round will do. We're going to paint those um, vines on our piece and now I've kind of wiped out my vines, but that's okay. It'll be just fine. I kind of know where they're going to go. So we just want to line it. Now you want to make sure that you don't make these too skinny because we do line highlighting and shading on these. So just kind of make them thick, thin, think like a vine. They don't have to take a career to do. And just keep adding um, till you get enough that you feel comfortable with it. I wouldn't pack them in real tight. And if you end up with uh, vines that don't go the whole length, I mean, you can just have little offshoots like here and maybe here. Remember your star and your lettering is gonna go on top of this. So it doesn't have to be real um, precise. You just kind of want to fill up that center a little bit with some um, vineage. Is that a word, vineage? So now what you want to do is you want to get out some fawn and we're going to line some highlighting here and there. It doesn't have to be on every single uh, vine that you painted and it doesn't have to go the whole length of the vines. So just kind of pick here and there. Uh, you want to line a little highlighting on the vines with fawn. So I'm just going to use the same liner brush that I painted them with. And even if they're still wet, that's fine. And I'm just going to kind of hit and miss, add some highlights. Just to spark them up a little bit, make them easier to see. Let's see, let's add a little here, a little on this one. It's going to vary because your vines aren't going to be exactly like mine. So then, um, in the same way, we're going to line some shading on our vines and with um, soft black, and again with that liner brush. And this, I'm just going to go where I didn't go before. And mainly, I want to try to do it where vines cross over each other. I kind of want to set whatever vine it is that ended up in the back um, back a little further so it's just all gonna be kind of pick and choose there's no right or wrong place to do this except if you were to do it over here um, we want to keep it on this blue part that was a joke just in case you didn't catch it okay just a couple more places there's actually less shading on here than there is highlighting. So you want to um, put out just a little bit of warm white and we're going to line the brightest highlights and it's going to be very few with warm white. Probably just the tips and if there's a spot you want to brighten up a little bit uh, where a, a vine goes over 
another piece of vine that's where you want to go and you can see they're just smaller highlights they're they're not huge okay uh, let's see maybe a little there I think that's good so we want to go back with our uh, flat brush and touch a little bit of shading here and there amongst the vines with Prussian blue. So that pretty blue again. And basically you just want to kind of go in here and deepen where there are little V's and where um, vines cross over each other. Right now I'm just working um, on those V areas, but I'm going to come in and I might touch a little here, and I'll probably touch a little there. And it's again, it's not going to be every vine that gets this. It's just a touch here and there, just to help pop that vine off the background a little bit. All right. I think let's go a little bit on this side I haven't done any on that side all right I think that's going to do it so we're going to let that dry and we're going to come back and with our filbert our number six filbert we're going to put some leaves on all right we have foliage green put out on our palette and we're going to use a number six filbert if you don't have a number six you could use a number four it would be fine um, and we're just going to randomly put some leaves through this vine each you're using my word again and so um, with the filbert what you want to do is you want to put the brush down and then as you pull away you want to twist it up to a point and that will give you a nice leaf now I want to warn you, don't get too carried away. Um, we do uh, highlight and shade each of these leaves. So don't go crazy unless you just want to. And I'll probably go through, I'll put some that are facing up and I'll put some that are facing down. So when I go to the facing down ones, I'm going to turn my... Uh, surface so you don't want them all going the same way and here again your best looking ones are probably going to be the ones that are going to be covered up by stars and letters but that's just the way it works all right one two three four five six seven eight wait two four six eight Nine. Okay, let's add just a few more, keeping it an odd number. I don't know why we decided that was what we needed to do at some point in time. But I always try to put elements on that are um, in odd numbers. I think I need maybe another one up here. Mm. Maybe right there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, I need one more. Let's see. Maybe right in here would be a good place for one more. All right. So I got 15 little leaves on there. So we want to let those dry, and then we're going to float some shading on them and line some highlighting. So you want to put out a little bit of Hauser Dark Green on your palette, and we're going to float shading in the bottom of each of those leaves with a float of Hauser Dark Green. Just a really quick little kind of C-stroke in the bottom of each leaf. shouldn't take too terrible long. Just 
just kind of helps to um, give them a little more uh, depth. Although we're not going for like realism here. All right, we're gonna come back with our liner brush and some thinned burnt umber and we're going to give those um, each of those leaves a little stem and center vein line. Thin down some burnt umber and just add, it, connect the leaves to the vein, to the uh, vine. Doesn't have to be perfect, thank goodness. You just didn't want them floating out there. They needed to be connected. So just a quick little curved line. The last thing we need to do to these leaves is to line a little bit of a highlight in the tip of each leaf with golden straw. So with your liner brush and some thin golden straw, we just want to highlight those tips with a little pop of color. So it's not a, ho a whole lot, it's just enough to highlight that tip a little bit. And I did it as a liner, with a liner brush because it's just faster and it does the job. Uh, you could float it in there, but lining it seems to work easy peasy. and just kind of pops them up a little bit. All right, let's call the vining part of this done. So now we can move on to our star cutouts. So I'm going to set this aside, I'm going to grab my star cutouts, I still have them down on my tape. And what I want to do first is I want to dry brush some highlighting through the center of each star with warm white. And so I will show you how I like to dry brush and then uh, you can take it or leave it, but I'll just give you an idea. I like to use a Lang Nickel Short Round Sable Brush. And when you uh, buy them initially, they're kind of pointy. They have a lot longer uh, bristle. But after you start using them a little while, and I actually picked up some warm white on here, they start uh, losing that point. And they will get kind of flat after a while. And this is still a good dry, uh, brush for dry brushing. So what I like to do is, let me see if my palette is on there. So I've got a whole mess of color here. Dry brush, we don't put any water in this brush, okay? I'm gonna pick up some paint. I'm gonna scrub it around on my palette in a circular motion. I'm gonna go clockwise and counterclockwise. And what I'm doing is I'm working that paint into the bristles a little bit, okay? So then the next thing I do is I come back to my towel back here and I wipe a lot of that paint out, okay? I don't want a glob of paint on there. And then I come to my hand and I kind of hit my hand with it and scrub it around in a circle. It's usually this area where I work it. And initially when I hit my hand, it's kind of cool. 
and as I scrub it around it loses that coolness and when it loses that coolness that's a good sign that you can go to your piece and be able to dry brush so I'm going to dry brush this warm white and I should have to scrub to get it out of my brush that's why we worked it into those bristles a little bit but see I'm not getting blotches I'm just getting a nice uh, even dry brush so now for the other star I reloaded rubbed it around on my palette I'm hitting my hand and I'm gonna go do my other guy Cool. So now you can wash your dry brush out. There are going to be occasions where I say don't wash your brush out because we're just going to pick up another color and combine the two. So the next thing we want to do is we want to float shading um, around all the edges of this star. And we're going to do that with honey brown. So just a corner load float of honey brown and it's going to go all the way around the outside edge of this star. It's a really nice color on that golden straw. Right. We got our shading on there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to, um, if we need to bump up this highlight, we can come back and dry brush more warm white, but I don't think I need to on these. I think they're good. So I'm going to get out a little bit of country red and I'm going to line a very thin stripe around the, out, the edges of that star. So you want to thin down the country red and just a very, you want to stay up on the tip of your liner brush and you're just going to line a very thin line. Now I'm going to take my stars off the tape to do this because it's easier if I can turn this star around. So I'm just going to do each little um, edge. I don't try to do it in one con continuous line. But I'm kind of staying close to the border. Closer in some places than I am in others. But it'll be okay. So a nice thin stripe around both those stars. Do this one real quick, quick, and we'll move on to the lettering. Sometimes I like to do it like a pinwheel. I'll go through and do one side and then come back and do the other. So do whatever works easiest for you. Just a quick and easy few things to do to these stars. So I'm going to set these aside and get my lettering out. All right, so we're going to float winter blue plus just a touch of navy blue. Royal navy, not navy blue. Royal navy down the sides of the letters and now I did this once but apparently I wasn't on camera so I thought I'd better do it again so they may look a little blue already and that's because I got off camera 
So down both sides, you don't have to worry about crossways or anything like that. So down one side and then I just flip my brush over and float the other side. It makes them much nicer, much prettier. And then these also get a thin stripe of country red. And it's gonna go, you may wanna get out your pictures for this. It's going to go mainly on the left side, but like with the S, it's gonna change sides. So let's start with the U. We're gonna go down this side. And then on the other arm of the U, We'll go down that also. On the S, if you don't line it exactly where I lined it, it'll be okay. I'm gonna start here in the middle and come down this side. I wanna start up here and kinda do this little stirrup thing. And I'm gonna do the inside of the stirrup here. I think I'll bring this up a little bit more. And then the A is relatively easy. It's kind of like the U. You go down the left side and then down the other left side next to the openings there and I just stop where the crossbar is and then continue below it and I think that's going to do it but if you want to outline more with country red be my guest it's your piece but to tell you the truth this looks good and it's not the focal point so I think this is quite enough so Basically, we have everything done that goes on that royal blue stripe. So I'm just gonna set these letters aside to dry. And the next part we're gonna work on will be the stripe section of the plaque. On the stripes, they're painted in country red. You wanna get out your uh, flurry stencil or whatever stencil it is you're going to be using on this piece and line it up and what we're going to do is we are going to stencil this design on with melon so get out your favorite stencil brush and let's add this flourish design or the design of your choice with melon. Just kind of dressing these stripes up a little bit. Oops. Don't want to do that. So you want to get out just a touch of warm white also because before I move this stencil what I want to do is I want to brighten up this center area of this design by picking up a little warm white and just doing a little bit lighter stencil through the center area. All right, it's not a whole lot brighter, but you can see a little difference. So now I'm gonna find that spot where this matches up and putting the melon back in my stencil brush. I haven't washed it out. I'm just gonna add that last little section there. Okay, 
So that's going to happen to all three stripes. And if you wanted, you could reverse so you're not getting the same design. So the first layer is melon, straight melon. And then through the center, you want to add a little bit of warm white to your melon. And lighten it up. So just a quick and easy way to add some more interest to that background. finish this I just saw so that's there okay right there takes me a minute all right one more to go Turn it back this way and maybe start it a different spot just to make them a little different. Lots of different little elements in this design that all kind of add and, and uh, complement each part of the design. And again, I'm going to pick up a little warm white and lighten that center area up, even though it'll probably be covered by the vase. It's good practice. Now let's line this up. Okay, I think it's there. Yep, that works. Okay, easy peasy stenciling to give our background some interest. The next step on these red stripes is going to be to float some shading all the way around. Um, just not these inside edges. You just want to float it um, top, bottom, and outside edges. And that's going to be done with black plum. I'm just going to go here. Don't worry about these grooves too, too much. We have a step that's going to kind of uh, take care of those. So I'm just going to go all the way down this side. come back and do the same thing on the outside edge. Go across the bottom. And 
and I'll go across the top. I'm just kind of bouncing around here, letting some floats dry before I get into them again. And then I'm also going to do the bottom and the top and bottom of each red stripe. Just not these edges. If you want to, you can, but then it kind of breaks them up and they don't really look like stripes, they look like squares. And I wanted the illusion of stripes. Alright, just a couple more floats and we'll be done. With the red stripes anyway. Kind of looks very rustic now. All right. So the next thing we're going to do, we need these floats to dry. And you're going to want to grab um, a wet wipe, a baby wipe, whatever you have handy. And we're just going to do some antiquing on here. So let's get this dry and get our baby wipes out. And we'll get started antiquing. So put some burnt umber out on your palette. And take your baby wipe and just kind of wrap it around your fingers a little bit. And pick up a little bit of burnt umber from your palette with it. It doesn't take a whole lot. And I kind of like to rub it around a little bit so it gets softened in there. It's not a, it's not a blob of paint. It's more evenly distributed. So then what I'm going to do is I'll go over here and start on my... Um, blue section and I'm just going to rub that burnt umber and the beauty of this is if you get it too dark you can always come with a clean part of your baby wipe and clean it up a little bit and so I did kind of rub it into that groove so this is where you kind of tone down that the groove a little bit. Tone down your groove. And so now I'm going to come over here and work on my red stripes and my white stripes. Now you want to do this gently. You don't want to um, rub too hard because you'll start rubbing your tissue paper off. I just want to tone the brightness of this background a little bit. And if you don't want to do this, it's perfectly fine. You don't have to. So now I feel like that got a little dark. So I'm going to take a clean part of my baby wipe and just kind of wipe some of the darkness out. Lighten up the centers a little bit. Although it doesn't look like it, does it? looks like I just totally destroyed it but it'll be okay trust me it's just the background it's the underwear so 
back on our red one. Be sure, to, be sure to get into that groove a little bit. Just a little bit more up here in this corner. Okay, so that looks a little dark, but it'll be okay because we're going to uh, take some warm white when this burnt umber is dry, and we're going to do a, like a wash of warm white over the white stripes. So let's dry this really quick. And I managed not to wipe off any of my tissue paper, so we're doing good. So just a large brush, make a wash of warm white, and just very lightly brighten up those white stripes. You still want to be able to see the antiquing and the tissue paper in the background, but just lighten them up a little bit with a wash of warm white. Thankfully there are only two white stripes. And the bulk of it is going to be covered with your vase anyway. Just a quick wash of warm white. If it's streaky, that's okay. It'll be just fine. And now it looks really rustic. That's what we want. We want rustic. We don't want it to be perfect. I'm not going to worry too much about this section of that stripe because it's going to be covered. Alright, so we can set this board aside if you wanted to go ahead and glue your uh, stars and letters in place. I would probably start by putting the S in the middle here and then just kind of lining them up. And if you don't want them to be straight, they don't have to be straight. They can be cockeyed if you want. So, see it already this part is fine because now your eye is drawn over here. So that um, we can set this all aside and we'll come back to it later when we get ready to glue our vase on top. The first thing we want to do to our vase is we want to wet it with clear water. Um, it needs to be pretty wet but not runny wet. I'm just going to wet the whole surface with clear water. And then what we're going to do is we are going to spatter the vase with warm white. And what's going to happen is those spatters are going to bleed and run. 
and that's exactly what we want. So thin down some paint and however you like to spatter, that works for me. I'm old school, I bang two brushes together. So I'm getting some fairly large spatters and it doesn't matter if it gets up into the flower part, it'll be okay. So kind of heavy. We want those spatters to bleed and run. Want some on that handle. All right, so we have to let this dry now. And I'm gonna get out my handy dandy heat it craft tool so I can dry that really fast. there dry so now what I want to do is I want to wet the vase again this time not quite as much water and uh, you're going to need out some of that uh, Royal Navy handle Just a touch of Royal Navy, and we're going to spatter this piece again with Royal Navy. And these dots are going to spread a little bit, but not as much as our white did, because we're not, um, we didn't put as much water on the surface. Come on, handle. Getting it everywhere but the handle. So it's pretty heavy. Let's dry that, and we can start with uh, dry brushing or highlighting. If you wanted to, you could come back and spatter it again with warm white. I might do that just to see what I get. And this time I wouldn't put any water on the surface. So let's give that a shot and just experiment a little bit. So I'm just gonna add, oh yeah, I think I wanna do that. Just add some white spatters on top that aren't blending and bleeding at all. And I like that, which means I have to dry it again. All right, we are gonna start by dry brushing some highlighting with warm white and if you have your pictures out you have a lot of good pictures um, you can kind of see where it's placed it's going to go um, what I like to call is this skinny area here I like to call that the neck and this is the belly of the vase and so I'm going to start um, just in the neck area and concentrate on the belly of the vase and we'll come back and we'll add more highlighting as we need it. But for right now, I'm coming all the way across in that neck area. Um, not in the center of the neck area, it was a little below center. And then I'm going to continue dry brushing. And it's going to stay mainly in the right side of the vase. I need a little bit more paint and there we go I'm gonna get a nice highlight out of that and it's gonna go down the side the right side a little bit start to give it some shape all right let's dry brush just a little bit of highlighting on the handle and this I'm going to go mainly in the top and maybe halfway down the side of the handle and you can wash your brush out so now we're going to float some shading down the sides of our vase across the bottom and in the bottom little foot also on the handle and we're going to do that with Royal Navy so just it's an intense color so blend it out really well you want this to be a nice soft float 
Up here in this corner here, I'm going to pretend like my I'm following the edge of the vase here. So it's not going to go all the way around the, the end of that flower. But a nice soft float of Royal Navy. When I get to this little foot, it's just going to be on either end. And I walk the color out just a little bit. So I'm going to turn this over so I can get the other side. And I'm going to do this side. Also want to float on the handle next to the vase, the body of the vase. I'm going to float across the top edge of the vase. I'm also going to float on the bottom, not the foot, but in the bottom of the vase itself. So right above the foot, there goes a float. And I think you can see how that's, that dry brushing and that shading together is starting to um, give this a little bit more dimension. So we want these floats to dry. And this next step, you're going to go, what? And if you don't want to do it, it's all right. I understand. But I did it, and I liked it, so it's in the directions. Everywhere you just floated with that Royal Navy, you're going to come back and float again with some very well blended out uh, burnt umber. And when I talk about being very well blended out, this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to corner load and I'm going to start blending and normally when you blend for a float you end up blending in the same line but when I want to soften that float a little bit I walk away from that line and leave more paint on my palette so I'll walk away a ways before I go to my piece so now I'm going to just go right back over where I floated before and this just kind of ages this base a little bit. You can still see the blue behind, that blue float behind. So on the foot, I'm going to turn it over, up the other side. Gonna go in the handle. Across the top. Most of this will be covered with flowers and leaves, but we still need to do it in case a little bit of it pops. And then I'm gonna come across the bottom again. dry that a little bit. We are going to come back and dry brush shading in the neck area of the vase and also in the bottom corners here. They're not really corners but I'm calling them bottom corners and we're going to do that with Royal Navy plus a touch of burnt umber. 
or burnt umber plus a touch of Royal Navy. So burnt umber, and I'm just going to pick up just a smidge of Royal Navy, and it makes this kind of ugly, dirty, bluish green. And this is a dry brush, and I think you can see this really well on your picture. So in the neck here, I'm going to start pretty wide, and I'm going to go in. Um, not just because I'm from Oklahoma, but I'm going to kind of make a tornado shape. So if you look at it this way, it looks like a little tornado. On both sides. And they don't have to meet in the middle. Just want to, well, I guess they kind of do have to meet in the middle, but not a lot, just a hint of them meeting in the middle. Now, when you do this, I also want you to kind of get up in this top part and round that shadow out too. I need to reload. I mean, the ratio is a whole lot of burnt umber and just a tinge of um, Royal Navy. And then I'm also going to come down here around the bottom and just widen out the float down there to make this look more rounded, kind of highlighting the belly. Be like me putting on a bathing suit. I'd be highlighting the belly, which means I don't wear bathing suits anymore. It's not that I don't wear bathing suits. I just don't go anywhere that I need to swim. I'm going to dry brush just a little bit of this on the handle on the bottom here and a little bit in the top. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, which is good because I don't have a whole lot left in my brush. Okay. It may get a little dark. Um, I've managed to avoid getting too dark on mine. But if it does, you just dry brush on top of it with winter blue plus a touch of uh, burnt umber. And you can brighten it up a little bit. But dark is not a bad thing. It's just if it gets too, too dark. And you'll know if you got it too, too dark. So now we're going to um, float a reflective highlight down both sides of the vase with winter blue. And what that means is I'm going to float winter blue um, down the sides. But what I want to do is I want to pull it in just a hair off the edge. I'm just going to start at the top. And what happens when I get to the bottom is I just kind of turn this corner a little bit. So I think you'll be able to see this fine. I'm just going to stay off the edge. And just do this float. And just turn that corner just a little bit. And down in the foot, the same thing. I'm going to stay off the edge. But I am going to add that little reflective float there too. So now I'm going to do the other side. This one I'll start with the foot. Then I'm going to start here around the corner a little bit and come up. Could have stayed a little closer to that edge. All right. I also want to do this reflective float on the side of the handle. It's not going to show up as much because most of our handles stayed winter blue. But just in case you can see it, I'm going to do some in the top, along the outside edge of that handle. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you wanted to, you could come back in and 
uh, dry brush, just a little bit more um, warm white here and maybe here. I'm going to go ahead and do that, but if you feel like yours is bright enough, then leave it alone. So I'm going to start right in here and brighten this float up a little bit. And then I'm also going to pull some up into this top edge. All right, I think I'm going to call the vase done. And now the vase is going to look completely different when we get the leaves and flowers on. So don't look at it and go, Bleh. well, if you do, I can't hear you. So if you want to go, Bleh, then go ahead. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the leaves. And surprisingly, they are pretty quick and easy. So we need, we're going to need a few colors. We've used them all before, I believe. So we want to base in our leaves. They're kind of long, skinny leaves with foliage green. One coat will do. And what I would encourage you to do is base in the leaf entirely, even the part that goes behind a flower, just because it'll be easier to work with. And I didn't count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaves. Hmm, not like me to not do nine. So they're all just based in with foliage green. And I may fast forward just because you see me base one leaf, you see me base them all. So we have the leaves based in. Let's dry them real quick. And the first thing we're going to do is dry brush and float some highlighting on it, each one with golden straw. So it's probably a good thing I only painted eight instead of nine. So I'm going to get out a little bit of golden straw. And we are going to dry brush. And basically, you can just dry brush all over the leaf with golden straw. You don't have to separate the two sides. We'll do that with our floats. So I'm just going to go all over. And it goes on pretty bright, but really, it'll tone down. It'll be okay. That's what I always say. That and it is just fine. Now this one I'm going to make on top, be the leaf on top of these two. So I'm going to dry brush it accordingly. This one is on top of that one. So keep that in mind when you're, when we come to floating our highlights. Last leaf. 
and then we can start highlighting. So you can wash your dry brush out. And the highlighting is going to go along the top edge of the leaf. And then you just kind of drop down to the middle of the leaf and float the center vein line. And this is done with golden straw also. So I'm going to decide which side is the highlighted side. And I'm just going to float golden straw highlighting. And then I'm just going to come to the center. I didn't flip my brush or anything. And I'm going to float a highlight across the top of the center vein line. And some of it you're not going to be able to see, like those kind of blend together. But when we put the shading in, then it will show up. So these two, this guy, get they get flowers over on top of them, so it doesn't, you don't have to be too careful about where you put this highlight float. And the, the side may change. So I'm going to make the highlight on the top of this leaf over here. But I'm going to make the highlight on the leaf right next to it on the opposite side. Because it's leaning just a little different way. Just a couple more. And if you didn't highlight exactly the way um, I did on the same sides as I did, it's fine. It's not going to be a big deal at all. But they're already starting to look like leaves. So we're going to float shading on our leaves. And that's just going to be the bottom edge and then above the center vein line. And that's going to be done with Hauser Dark Green. So I'm going to go to where I started because I know those floats will be dry, which means we're upside down for a few. I'm going to float this lower edge with Hauser Dark Green. And I've got kind of a line there, so I'm going to mop it out and soften it a little bit. So the opposite of where you floated highlighting, you're going to float shading. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Let's do this guy. Oops, on the wrong side. Just as I said, I'm getting the hang of it. I go and flub up. I should not do that ever again. Say anything or flub up, but 
It's going to happen. So now the guy, the leaf that's on top of them all, I'm going to come back and do that. So we are going to work on floating some shading in the bottom of each leaf with some burnt umber. And so what happens here is we kind of treat it like a couple of little C strokes. We make it look like a, a little bum or something. All right, so burnt umber, and I'm gonna start a little ways down the side and I'm just going to float in the bottom of each section of the leaf with burnt umber. So each leaf is divided into two sections now. So I'm going to float a C stroke in the bottom of each section and make it kind of like a little, little bump. I think I need to come back and add a little bit to this one. So when you get here, you want to float in the bottom of it, but then you also want to float next to that other leaf that's on top of it. It's going to look kind of messy. It'll be okay. Let's do the bottom of this bigger leaf. These guys, you want to just go straight across and separate them from each other. And then we're going to finish off these last two leaves. And we're going to add some details to them. They're looking a little more leafy now. So I'm going to line the lower edge of each leaf. And what I'm going to do is I'll pull this thing up here so you can see. It's the lower edge and it's kind of thick, thin. And it's kind of where it, I try to make it look like uh, the leaf is curled a little bit and that's with your liner brush and thinned warm white. So thin down some warm white in your liner brush and let's go with this guy first. It'll be the easiest. So I'm just going to come along the bottom edge and it's thick and thin just adding some details to the edge of that leaf. I'm going to do that to every single leaf. So just think like the, the edge of the leaf is curled a little bit. Doesn't have to take forever. If you wanted to put some on the opposite side, that'd be fine too. You're doing it on the shadow side. So these two leaves, it's going to be opposite sides. I'm saying that so I'll remember. But that makes them a little more interesting.
supposed to add a little golden straw to that. So I'm going to go back and try to add a little. I thought it looked a little white. Just going to add a little golden straw. It really doesn't make that much difference. But enough. So I apologize. trying to stay on the first line that I put on there. Luckily I already have it on so it'll go fast. So the vein lines there are a few vein lines on each leaf, and you want to do that with thinned. How is your dark green? And I really didn't line the center vein line. I just lined the little vein lines that come out from the center. If you wanted to line the center vein line, that would be perfectly all right. But I want you to think like vein lines. They're not just straight, okay? They're going to come out from the center and maybe get like a little bit nervous or like blood vessels that have split you know when you get bloodshot eyes that kind of thing and try not to line them up like little soldiers try to vary them as I line them up like little soldiers I always do that when I say that I should stop saying that So the next thing we're going to work on is our sunflowers. So you're going to want to get out your um, filbert brush again, and that was a number six. And you want to get out some honey brown, and we're going to put our first ring of petals on around the centers with honey brown. And here again, just like you did your leaves, you're gonna put the brush down and then kind of, as you pull away, twist up onto the edge uh, to get the point. So I'm gonna start, and it's gonna go over. I'm just gonna complete the whole flower. I'm not gonna try to avoid where the daisies are gonna go. I am going to start just a little bit inside that center that I have on there. I'm going to add these petals. Let me get a little closer with honey brown. And it's going to go right over probably your best looking leaf, right? And these petals that come off the edge, we're going to try to make them a little shorter so you don't lose those points too much. So just 
just add some petals. That first row with honey brown. Let's go to our next sunflower. This one will be a little easier because you don't have an edge to deal with. And it's also a little bit larger. These flowers actually work up pretty quick. And it's all because of the brush that you're using to paint the petals. I guess I could stay on camera. I get a little carried away. And if your filbert is in good shape, it makes it a whole lot easier. Filberts, for me, tend to um, break down rather quickly. But I found that if I clean them with the waterless hand sanitizer um, after I've used them, they seem to work pretty good again. I've been able to make them last a little longer than they used to for me. So if you destroy your filberts relatively quickly, you are not alone. I have my sunflowers on. I'm going to back up a little bit in hopes that I'll stay on camera a little bit more. So I'm just going to um, not wash out this brush. I'm just going to wipe it a little bit and I'm going to pick up golden straw and I'm going to add the next layer of petals with that honey brown golden straw kind of mix. And I'm just, uh, just to make it easier, I'm going to Stroke those in between these other ones. So placement is a little bit easier to decide on. So it's a honey brown golden straw mix. So it's not so bright and in your face yellow yet. I'm liking these already. I keep telling people I'm not a flower person. So if you expect realism from me in flowers, yeah, that's not going to happen. But I can do kind of real looking flowers. All right, doesn't that look lovely? So again, golden straw plus honey brown. I'm going to work on this guy. And if you vary the amounts of uh, golden straw and honey brown, you'll get nice variation in your petals. I think I picked up a little bit more golden straw in these last few petals. And let's fit another one in there. So one more to go. This little guy. And as you do this more, it gets a little easier. You know when to start that turn to get the size of petal that you want.
All right. So we have um, a, a, the lightest layer, and that's going to be with golden straw plus warm white. So I'm just going to wipe that brush out again. Pick up some golden straw and pick up a little warm white so I get a little bit lighter value of that yellow. And these petals will be just a little bit smaller and they don't necessarily have to go in between. They can go just about anywhere you want them to go. So if you start putting them on and they start off in between those uh, second that second layer, now I'm getting a little bit of a feather there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my filbert out and reload it with golden straw and warm white. Usually that happens to me when I've got too much paint kind of stuck down near the ferrule. So I'm going to just reload with golden straw and some warm white. And hopefully I'll have better luck. Yeah, a little bit better. So you can see I picked up a little bit more uh, warm white this time. That wasn't quite a petal. Just a couple more petals on this one. And we can call it done. It's amazing how quickly I get off screen. All right, let's move on to the next one. Hopefully I'll do a better job staying on the screen. So these are just the brightest petals. Right. I love how quick these petals work. Okay, these are going to be a little short, guys. Because this is the smallest of our sunflowers. So you want to kind of keep them a little shorter. anyway. One more. All right. I think those are some pretty good looking sunflowers. We're going to work on the centers and those are going to be stippled in. So get out your favorite stippling brush. I like to use the Lang Nickel Short Round again. And we're going to use a soft black and we're going to stipple in those centers. So they're nice round centers. So like this guy, I got a little oblong. I can fix that when I stipple in the center. And I'm going to stipple those, that center, it's going to go right over the base of those petals. I want that center just a little bit bigger. Always start smaller than you think you want. You can always make it bigger. But it's kind of hard to make it smaller. Okay, yeah, I like that shape. So let's go into this one. Just try to keep it round.
And let's get this last guy in here. I think he's going to stay a little bit of an oval. Okay. So just wipe that brush out now. And you're going to stipple the center of each of the centers in with uh, honey brown, but really light. Keep it light and airy. Don't fill it up with honey brown, but just kind of stipple a little honey brown in the very center. And now, stipple brush is going to be a little too big to do the next step. So you're going to want to get yourself your liner brush out. And we're going to tap a ring around the center. So where we just did that stipple of honey brown, we're going to tap a more dominant ring around the center with honey brown. Kind of try to keep it... Um, evenly spaced so just a ring of honey brown and then you're also going to tap some color on this ring with burnt umber and I'm going to keep that mostly in the bottom half I might get a little bit up into the top but mostly it's going to stay towards the bottom of that heavier ring And we're also going to um, tap a little bit of golden straw on that ring. This I'm going to keep more towards the top. It's going to go get down into that uh, darker part of the ring, but it's not going to go around completely. Just wipe that brush out, pick up a little warm white, and tap the lightest, kind of in the top right side, with straight warm white. If your uh, golden straw is still wet, that's alright. It'll kind of blend it a little bit more. We are going to float some shading at the base of those uh, top petals with some very well blended out burnt umber. So this is just, and you can get into that center. Um, it doesn't matter because it's darker than the burnt umber. So I'm just going all the way around the center, touching a little burnt umber shading at the base of those front petals. I don't do anything to the back. So just a quick little touch of burnt umber at the base of those front petals.
And I'm okay if it's a little bit of a rough float because we're going to add a little texture to these petals too with our liner brush. And goodness gracious, don't those look even better with that little touch of burnt umber at the base. So um, we're going to line some details. Basically, that just means some little lines on those front petals just coming out from the center. So liner brush and thinned burnt umber, just some little lines. And they two or three on each petal will do just to make it look like little creases or something. It adds so much to it, but you don't have to be so careful about keeping the same number of creases in each petal or you know, doing two in one and three in the next one and then two in the next one. Um, just mix it up a little bit. If you want one to just have one little crease, perfectly fine in my book anyway. right so I do line a little bit of a highlight on the tips of those front petals with warm white now this is just a touch it doesn't have to be a whole lot it's kind of like what we did on the um, leaves earlier we just want to make those front petals stand out just a hair more Right, so just a couple of lines in the petals, the front petals, to make them come forward even a little bit more. Then we're done. Um, you know, there is a little, if you wanted to add some little petals that are flipped over in the center of one of these, that'd be great. I did it on a couple things, but I don't think I'm going to do it on this one. I think I'm going to leave it just as it is. All right, so now we're done with the sunflowers, and the next thing we're going to work on is the daisies. Daisies are next up, and so these are relatively easy. Um, they are comma strokes, 
and I am going to use a number four round. They're comma strokes, but you don't have to worry about the tails too much because your tails are going to end up being covered up by the center. So you need to get out um, warm white. Don't water it down. Just kind of load your number four round or whatever you feel most comfortable um, painting these daisies with. And so I'm going to start with this big one here. And what I like to do first is always pull this bottom center one. All right. And then I'm going to start curving. I want you to think like a daisy, how the petals are coming out of the center. So they're going to start curving. And they're going to start curving more and more as you get around the center. So just add some comma strokes all the way around the center. Now I'm going to stop about right here, halfway up the side, and I'm going to go work on the other side because it's going to curve a different way and it's going to, that's where I'm not going to get nice tails. So I'm really glad I put a center over that. And yes, it's going to go right over this sunflower here. This daisy has a lot of petals. So as you continue around the back, um, keep thinking about how, how the petals are going to come out from the center across the back. They're going to be a little shorter. And obviously, if you look at mine, they're going to be a little fatter. All right, so there, we have one done already. And so all of the daisies are put on that way. So most likely, I will do this and kind of fast forward, not too fast but fast forward a little bit because it's the same thing over and over. So you don't need to worry about um, watching it in real time. Um, when you get up to these top ones, you notice they're just short little strokes. They're not the big long strokes. You want to give the illusion that, that those petals are further back behind um, the center. So just, just do little short ones there and be sure not to put your finger in it like I just did. Okay, three more daisies to go. All right, so we want to let those daisies dry and then we're going to come back and do their centers. 
you want to get out some golden straw and we're going to stipple in the centers of each daisy now keep in mind these are oval centers they're not round centers okay so get out your favorite brush to stipple with and let's give ourselves our daisies some centers And this is where you can cover up those uh, tails that aren't just perfect. Alright, last daisy done. Um, I think I need to fix that shape a little bit. He needs to be a little bit over here. There we go. So don't wash your brush out. Just wipe it out and get out some honey brown. And we're going to stipple a little shading in along the bottom edge of each center. So honey brown. Just add a little shading. You could float shading, but stippling is more interesting. So just along the lower edge. And if it doesn't go right on the lower edge, it's okay just adds to the character of the flower. Again, just wipe the brush out. And let's pick up a little bit of warm white. And we're going to stipple highlighting in the top of each center. Oh, I missed a bottom. I'll come back and get that in a second. That little guy that I missed putting the shading on the bottom. All right. So what you want to do now is you want to get out some winter blue. And we're going to float just a touch of winter blue at the base of each of the petals. And this one, you don't, you can just float around the center. You don't have to um, go individually unless you just want to. So just a nice, soft float of winter blue, and you're going to go around at the base of each petal. And you don't, you can float right over the brown that's in between. It'll be okay. Makes it a whole lot quicker if you don't have to float each petal individually so you can thank me later.
So it's a nice soft flow. It doesn't blare at you. You just want that hint of blue there. And we have one more. Okay, cool. Daisies are looking good. You now there are a few little details on the petals. And we're going to do those with um, thinned burnt umber. It's not as much as we did on the sunflowers. But just a little bit here and there. So what I'm going to do, and let me get close here, I'm just going to pull some little lines all the way around on each petal. They, you don't want them to be real dark. Just some nice little lines. If you only put one on, that's fine. It gives the idea. And then I'm also going to take my liner brush and thin burnt umber. I'm going to start, I'm going to line the lower edge of the center with kind of a wiggly, squiggly little line. Okay? So each um, Daisy is going to get those details lined on and then the lower edge of the center gets that squiggly line across it. It's another fast forward moment. We can call our daisies done. We do have some small leaves. They're done with our filbert and with Hauser dark green. And they're just not as many, not too many, just here and there, mainly next to the daisies. So I think I put in, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I put in 11. So those are going to be done with our number 6 filbert and Hauser dark green. With Hauser dark green, you're just going to use your, using your filbert at number 6. We're just going to go around and add some little leaves. Just like the ones we did on the um, blue side panel there. But these are going to stay kind of around the daisies. You can put as many as you want. Um, but I wouldn't get too carried away. Let's see. Let's put one over here. I'm going to put one here. Kind of went over a daisy, but it'll be okay. And let's put one here. I did put some that came down onto the vase a little bit.
So we stuck some filler leaves in there and they are going to get their um, center vein line and stem lined with thinned soft black. So liner brush, we just want to, we just, we don't want them just floating there. So we're just going to line a thin line of soft black so they look like they're on a little stem. doesn't take much to anchor those guys. Let's do these in a little bunch. All right, I think I've stemmed them all. So our next step is going to be the little berries. And if you have uh, Chris's Painter's Pal or another uh, stencil with circles on it, it's going to make these berries go really fast. I'm going to dry these uh, filler leaves and then we'll be back to do our berries. So we went to get out some country red. You can paint these in or stencil them in. I went ahead and cleaned my stencil because it was pretty dirty. And I'm just going to stencil in berries here and there with country red. And let's see, let's start with one right there. It's going to go really fast with um, the stencil. And you can add as many as you want. Just keep in mind that we, uh, we do highlight and shade. Use your picture as a guide if you want to. You don't have to. Let's see. I might want one right there. Two of them really close together. I, think I have three down here. If you want to uh, put little X's with your chalk pencil to remind you where they're at. That would be good. Okay, I think that's enough berries. So I'm going to wash out my stencil brush and dry these real quick. You're going to need just a dot of melon. Um, remember, melon we use to stencil those the design on the red stripes. So just a touch of melon. We're going to float a highlight in whatever you determine is the top of each of your berries. And so I use the term float uh, generously because it's really barely a float. Goes on bright, it'll tone down. So whatever I've determined is the, the top of this berry, that's where I'm going to float this highlight. It's actually the top to the side a little bit on some of them. So it doesn't matter which side you put it on as long as you put your shading opposite this. So just a quick little touch of a highlight with melon.
All right, we're going to need black plum. I think I got all those berries. So you're going to need black plum, and you're going to float shading in the bottom or the opposite of where you just floated highlighting. So again, just a little touch. So it doesn't have to be a, a nice wide float. So I'm going to turn this guy over or to the side maybe so I can get into the opposite side of my berries. I think I blended it down too much. There we go. All right. So just opposite of wherever you did that highlight, you're going to do a shadow. Let's see. Do I have any more that way? Nope. So let's turn this over. Just a couple more, or a few more. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to just add a quick little warm white highlight dot in the highlighted side of each of those berries. And you can, you can dot it with your stylus if you can keep your fingers out of it or you can just use a little brush and just add a highlight in the highlighted side. And this is warm white, I apologize. Okay. This goes really fast. I think I got them all. And so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add that, give them a little stem and um, a little dot on the bottom of each berry with thin, soft black. So we just don't want them floating out there. We, we want to connect them to something, even though we can't see that something. But I'm going to come here and just line a little stem. And it's kind of a, a wonky little stem. And then I'm just going to add a dot like a belly button. These guys are connected together. So let's see. I'm going to do here and go all the way down to that bottom one. And then I'm just going to make these come off that main stem. And each one of those is going to get a little dot of soft black in the bottom. And some of these you might not be able to uh, really see the stem, but you still need to do it. And like this one, I really can't do a stem on that one. So I'm just going to give it its little dot in the bottom. Uh, let's go over to these guys. I think they're going to get like a stem here. And this guy might get one coming from behind that other dot. So you just kind of decide if you can fit a stem in there, fit a stem in there. But stem or no stem, they all need that little dot in the bottom. Look at that we're almost done. Uh, let me see, where do I want this guy to come from? I'm going to have him come from the sunflower. And then these guys are just going to come up from the daisy. And my highlight dot's kind of in the way there, but we'll make it work. I think I'll, hmm, maybe I'll add it right there and right there. All right, so basically the painting part of this piece is done.
It, and I'm sure you did a fabulous job. So the only thing we have left to do is to let these berries dry, the dots and stuff. And let me back up here. And I've already glued my star and my letters in place. So I'm going to get out some glue. You can use the E6000, Liquid Fusion. I've been using um, Aileen's Tacky Glue lately. It seems to work really well for me. So I'm going to try to keep my fingers out of those little dots. And I'm just going to add some glue. And I also want to touch just a little on that handle. You don't need a whole lot. And the way I decided to do this is I kind of centered it on the centered the foot here onto this middle rectangle. Left a, about a finger space away from the bottom. All right, so what's left is for you to sign the piece and then varnish it with your favorite. Uh, I would use spray varnish because of so many cutouts, but and um, I love to use Deco Art spray varnish gloss, makes it really nice and shiny, gives it a good protective coat. But um, any of your favorite varnishes would be great. So there you go. I hope you had a great time. I hope you love your piece. And I also hope I see you again in the future. Thanks so much for joining me.